Hi, good morning everyone. Thanks, Cara. That was very nice of you. Um, so, obviously, my name is Kate. Um, I'm the Operations Manager for Speciality. So, first I just want to explain the role of the Operations team. We are working behind the scenes, making sure the show is built on time, everyone's working smoothly and safely, um, and essentially responsible um, for everything going as planned. Um, Exhibitor-wise, we are your first port of call for any queries regarding um, the build of your stand, both space and shell, um, health and safety, including food safety, any logistical questions, practicalities, um, we're here to help. Um, so George, you already, already uh, covered the exhibitor zone and mentioned the operations zone. Um, so that obviously forms part of the operation, the exhibitor zone overall, and is your one-stop shop to all operational questions that you might have. So firstly, in the operations section, I would recommend having a look at the order forms and deadlines. So uh, this is the list of order forms that you will see, um, operational order forms, both compulsory and optional. I would really recommend meeting all deadlines on the order forms. Um, some of the services do carry a surcharge if you don't order your um, services on time. For instance, uh, one that affects a lot of people is the electrical order form. The deadline date to submit your electrical orders is the 4th of August. Um, um, after this date, there will be a surcharge applied. So, for instance, a 500 watt socket would cost £99.15 before the 4th of August. If you ordered your socket after the 4th of August, it would cost £118.98. So I'm sure all of you would much prefer to pay a lesser amount, so please do look at the deadline dates carefully. Um, so following on from this, all shell scheme stands um, that have a socket included, if you're not sure what's included in your stand, you can find this in the shell scheme uh, specification in the operation zone. Um, all sockets that have a shell scheme, sorry, all sh uh, shell scheme stands that have a socket included is 500 watts. A 500 watt socket powers a laptop, a phone charger, a small fridge, something like that. If you plan to plug in equipment that uh, draws more than 500 watts, for instance, a coffee machine, a microwave, something like that, um, you will either need to order additional power or upgrade your socket. And you can do this through the uh, electrical form in the operation zone. If you don't upgrade your socket or order additional power, then you will uh, just blow the whole block, which will make you really unpopular with your neighbors and um, would be a nightmare, for instance, if you had a freezer full of ice cream and everything just kept blowing. It, it's, it does happen a lot if people don't order the correct amount of power. But please do come and talk to us if you have any questions on electrical requirements because I, I do appreciate it's a bit confusing. So um, next is health and safety. I realise it's not everyone's favourite topic, so please do bear with me. Um, it's really, really important for our industry. Um, you may or may not know about the new CDM regulations that have come um, come in. Um, CDM regulations, in a nutshell, are a new set of health and safety laws that are specific to the exhibition industry. <coughs> if you're a space-only exhibitor, I'm not sure how many space-only exhibitors there are here, but please do ensure that your contractor is aware of CDM. They probably would be, but if they're not, please do mention that to them. Um, if you're not sure about CDM, then you can email me or Kaylee, um, and then we can explain it to you, but I won't go into it now because it's um, if you're at Shelton Exhibitor, then the majority of the CDM um, regulations fall to our contractor because they build your stand for us. Um, but there are a few tips that all exhibitors should be adhering to, whether you're space or shell. Um, you must complete your exhibiting company risk assessment. I cannot stress how important this is, and we ask for it every year, and we are fully committed to making sure everyone submits their risk assessment this year, and we will chase you and chase you until you submit it. So you can find it in the order forms and deadline section of the operations zone and go home and do it now and then we won't bother you about it again. Um, site rules. Um, there are a set of site rules that everyone should adhere to for build up and breakdown. You can find these again in the operations zone. You can also find them in the, um, the link that is at the top of your agenda. Um, but I will just go through a couple of really important ones. You must wear a high-vis jacket in the loading bay. You don't have to wear one in the hall, but if you are in the loading bay, so unloading your vehicle or loading your vehicle, you must wear a high-vis jacket. Um, we will be selling them on site if you don't have one. 
Um, you must wear suitable footwear, no flip-flops or high heels. If you're wearing silly shoes, then you won't be able to come in the hall. Um, there is also a massive uh, focus on working at height at the moment. So if you are planning on using a ladder, please ensure that you are up to date on all the current regulations. There's a really good website called Stop the Drop, which again is in the, uh, the link to the online information pack at the top of your agenda, uh, which has all the information on there about working safely at height. So please do check that out if you're planning on using a ladder. So food safety. Um, it's really important that you fill out the on-site health and sorry online health and safety declaration and food and drink sampling form. I'm assuming all of you are going to be sampling food and drink here, so um, please do fill that out again in the order forms and deadlines section. In previous years, the health and safety declaration and the food and drink sampling form have been two separate forms. We've combined these into one really easy online form, um, so to make it as simple as possible for you. We will also chase you for this, so please, please do submit it. Um, once you have filled out the form and told us what you're going to be sampling, we will then just send you information back which is specific to your sampling activity. So you'll either have low, medium or high sampling activity. Um, this information will include in, uh, if you need a sink, so hand wash facilities, um, or if you can just use antibacterial wipes and spray. We will also um, give you some ideas of how to reduce risks and cross-contamination. So for instance, if you're sampling crisps or nuts, environmental health officers really don't like multiple visitors dipping into the same bowl of product. Um, we always recommend buying small shot glasses and putting a, a small amount of each product in a shot glass. That reduces all uh, cross-contamination. And if you are doing that on the show, there are environmental health officers going around and they will stop you. Um, we have a duty to make sure that all health and safety, uh, food safety and hygiene standards are maintained. We want to encourage all exhibitors to sample from their stand. It's a huge draw um, and it's really integral, a really integral part of the show. Um, so we're trying to make the information we give you, uh, that you give us, as simple as possible. Um, we do also employ an independent environmental health officer. Um, we employ him pre-show, so if you have any questions, if you need any advice, then um, we can put you in contact uh, with him free of charge. And he will be at the show going around making sure that everyone is sampling safely. So, uh, nearly done. A couple of reminders. Um, please do book a time slot to um, unload your vehicle, unload your vehicle during build-up and breakdown. If you don't book your time slot and you just turn up, you could be waiting ages to unload your vehicle. Olympia is a really, really busy venue. We're not the only exhibition running at this time and it's just really important you book your time slot online so you get the time that you want. The, uh, the date that the online booking system opens is the 28th of July. Again, the um, link is in the uh, order forms and deadlines section of the operations manual and in the information at the top of your agenda. Um, if you need a forklift, please contact Agility Fairs and Events. They are the only company uh, licensed to use a forklift in the hall. They are our official freight forwarder. Um, if you are using a forklift, please do bring your own trolley. It's much quicker than just hand carrying stuff in and Agility don't rent trolleys anymore because people used to steal them. So please bring your own trolley. Um, and they, they are also... Um, so Agility will have a service desk on site as well, so please do use them for deliveries and courier needs as well. Um, and just lastly, please, Georgie touched on it, please, please spend some time looking through the operations zone. I'm sure that all the questions you have, the answers can be found in there. Um, otherwise, myself and my colleague Kaylee over there are here. If you have any questions, we'll be over on that table. Thank you. Thank you.